Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I do a lot of videos, obviously, and many of them are talking heads. And today's video will not be me reading a script because I thought I would do something a bit self-indulgent. It's what transit network would I build for Toronto if I was supreme leader of the province of Ontario or something along those lines. To be clear, there should be some caveats laid out in front of you. The first one is that I'm going to try to stick to the existing budget that has been set out in the Toronto subway projects, which is around $27 billion. I might go slightly higher, but hey, it's a transit channel, so we support spending a little more money on transit when it's a good value, right? The next thing is I've based my plans off of what is currently being built. Uh, I make some changes to existing projects to get better value for them. The second thing to note is that my plan is sort of costed. To be clear, I have not gone through in detail and uh, you know, generated a very specific or very precise estimated cost because obviously I think it's kind of meaningless to do so. But what I've done is I've sort of used existing projects as a heuristic to model the costs of my projects. So I've looked, what is the cost of doing elevated heavy rail? What is the cost of doing elevated light rail slash light metro? What is the cost of doing surface rail and surface light rail? What is the cost of doing tunneled transit in Canada across a number of projects? And the reason I look at all of Canada is it's typically the same engineering firms and construction firms working on the projects, as well as, of course, looking at examples within Toronto. So while my numbers won't be exact because uh, I don't have hundreds of engineers and planners to uh, make sure that they are exact, I, I think I've given a pretty fair cost estimate to a lot of the projects. Now, my video is not going to be talking about Go. It does not focus a ton uh, on the sort of inner uh, area of Toronto. I do mention the Ontario line in the video, and I do think that's a good project for the downtown area and for the core of the city. But I think that a lot of the improvements we're gonna see in core areas of Toronto post Ontario line are via things like the improved streetcar network on the waterfront, which I talked about in a video up here, as well as in just enhancing Go, adding stations, etc. If you'd like me to do a separate video talking about how I would change around our plans for Go's regional rail, leave a comment down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first project I want to comment on is the Ontario line. I have only one minor change that I would make to the project, and that's adding a station at Cherry Street. Adding a station at Cherry would better serve the waterfront, it would better serve the distillery district and the canary district, and frankly, since the line should be either at the surface or close to the surface there, I think that it would be a good investment. I don't think it would be incredibly expensive too if the plan was planned around it, and so I would support such a project. I've made an estimation of $100 million to do such a station. I think that's very reasonable, but I'm just gonna put it out there that that is what I estimated the cost to be. Also, to be clear, I'm gonna use the inflated cost that we pay for Transit in Canada, not because I think it's reasonable, but because I want to sort of cover my bases. Uh, I could say that, hey, like we should just start doing everything uh, the Spanish way, and that's gonna suddenly cut our costs by half, but I don't think that's fair, so my budget's are based on projects uh, and costed projects in Canada built in the last year or so or being planned at the moment. The next project I would do is the Eglinton West Line. I think it has a ton of value and I would like to maintain its grade separation. I think that's particularly important on the west end of the line because there is obviously grade separation all the way to Mount Dennis and so continuing it makes sense so that you don't sort of go from grade separated to non-grade separated back to grade separated, which kind of removes the benefit of that later grade separated portion, but also because I think that the airport should be connected to the rest of the TTC subway system with at least one grade separated line and I think Eglinton at the moment has the best chance of doing that. So what I would change with this line is I would elevate almost all of it. Some portion will be elevated uh, as is planned right now, but I would take almost the entire line and elevate it. That would substantially reduce the cost of constructing the line, and it might even mean you could add some more stations. And instead of stopping at the eastern end of the Mississauga Transitway, I would tunnel under the runway and go straight into Pearson Terminal 1. Now, it's possible that you come up with a better alignment and uh, you know, 
maintain grade separation, but use like a trench and sort of do a circumferential route or something along those lines. But I think that given the short distance that such a tunnel would be, uh, that it's justifiable and that you could do something along those lines. Uh, but there is obviously other routes you could take. The entire budget I calculated for this project, considering the fact that much of it now becomes elevated instead of above ground, but we do add a fairly short tunneled section at the end, would bring us up to $3.98 billion. Though, of course, it's a rough number. To be clear as well, I think that doing this project as a single phase is valuable. I know that the airport is sort of running a lot of the plans with regard to how the Eglinton Crosstown enters the airport lands and, and with transit centers, etc. The way I see things, have Eglinton go to Pearson Terminal 1, and if things get changed in the future, I don't think it would be a huge issue to extend the line a short distance to a future transit center, or even have a short extension to Terminal 3 if we thought that was valuable. Now, at the same time we're talking about that, I would also extend Line 5 along the Mississauga Transit Way to Mississauga City Center. I was sort of debating how I would do it, but I wanna have the Toronto subway network connect to Peel Region. It's a significant area of Canada with tons of population and the fact that it isn't directly connected to Toronto with uh, rapid transit at the moment is problematic. Uh, of course, GO is going to improve the connectivity to Peel region, but short of a really fantastic regional rail network that allows us to do something like a stub tunnel into Mississauga city center, connecting Peel and in particular Mississauga city center with the rest of the subway network probably requires extending one of the existing uh, rapid transit lines. Line two is a potential option, but I think line five makes more sense since there are already station locations and a good right of way laid out thanks to the Mississauga Transit Way. The line would be entirely using the Mississauga Transit Way alignment. You might have to make some modifications to bridges and things like that. And you might also drop some of the lower use stations. Uh, and then when you got to the end of the line where uh, it kind of exits onto city streets, I would go underground for a short tunnel that would end roughly where the Here Ontario LRT stop at Mississauga City Center will be. I calculated the cost of this project being about $1.82 billion because you mainly are just converting the existing transit way to use uh, light rail as we've seen done in Ottawa in recent years and then adding that short tunnel section at the end. Of course, that conversion isn't easy, but it still makes it a lot easier than just driving your own new right of way. The next project is the Young North extension. So my opinions on this project have changed and well, part of me likes the idea of extending the line all the way to Richmond Hill Center. Another part of me, the part of me that's probably based in reality, thinks that maybe we should actually end the line at Steeles. Obviously, being a short line, it would be less efficient than a long line, but part of me just hurts thinking that we are going to extend another subway line into York Region given the fact that York Region already has a subway line extending into it and there isn't fantastic transit service connecting to it. There is some service and it was enhanced to some degree and there is some nice infrastructure, but I'm not confident that York Region is going to massively increase their transit service and without that, I don't think suburban subway extensions make sense. Uh, if you provide fantastic TTC level feeder service, then they're great because you can actually bring in tons of passengers and create a really good transit network. But since it doesn't seem like your region is interested in doing that, again, basing my thoughts on the existing extension of Line 1 into Vaughan, I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, even if you're doing a ton of property development, which is great for York Region, not necessarily the rest of the GTHA, you're not going to feed a subway extension with a bunch of high rises unless you truly are doing Hong Kong level density. And so I just can't justify uh, taking the subway all the way there. What I would do instead is terminate it at Steeles, have the station at Cummer because there's a major development going in there and because yes, it is a semi-major road and then have a major bus terminal at Steeles. You have a lot of room that you could probably work with on the parking lots for Center Point Mall uh, and that would allow you to take a ton of buses off Young Street because let's be honest, a lot of the buses on Young Street are between Steeles and Finch Station. Hopefully my changing opinion on this is something that people can appreciate. I just, you know, as something I complain about with York Region's public transit service, I don't think that building higher order transit makes a ton of sense when they're not gonna feed it with great service. Uh, and York Region is still getting higher order transit in the form of several uh, improved GO lines. Based on the costs I've seen on other projects, this would cost 1.4 to 1.5 to $2 billion to uh, build this extension. It's expensive, but I think having way improved connectivity for the Steels bus, as well as providing a shorter bus ride for many in York Region, as well as decongesting Young Street, the project is still worth it.
The next project I would build is the Western extension of the Shepherd line. I've talked about it many times in the past, but I desperately want the Shepherd line extended west to Shepherd West Station. Not only is it great for operational reasons, because yes, Toronto does have this sort of unified subway network. The problem is that all of it uh, is sort of connected in just a few places in the downtown core. And so adding another connection outside of the downtown core that allows you to move trains from the Young Line to the Spadina Line and from the Shepherd Line all around the place would be super valuable. Uh, the project would be tunneled because the existing stub end which reaches Sandlock Road is already tunneled uh, and also because it's just not that long and so I figure okay we can maintain the tunneled uh, nature of the line. Uh, when I get to Shepherd West I would both build a connecting tunnel slash surface section that links you in to the existing Wilson Yard that would be very valuable for obviously moving trains around doing maintenance and the like but I would do something else and I think this is an interesting thing to consider. I would build track connections grade separated to the Spadina line and then what I would do is I believe we already do this but I would short turn some trains either at Shepherd West or at uh, a station to the south. I think that again that's something we already do in peak hours and I would through run some trains from the Shepherd line onto the TYSSE. To be clear there would be separate Shepherd line platforms at Shepherd West but what this would mean is since the northern section of the uh, Spadina line would have lower frequency as it again I believe already does uh, we would be able to have for example trains on the Shepherd line going to York University and into Vaughan and I think that'd be really useful actually. Uh, York University is obviously a very important destination. It's one of the largest universities in Canada and this would allow you to have a direct ride from York University uh, all the way to North York, Scarborough and it just really improves connectivity and so I think it actually makes quite a bit of sense. Uh, this makes more sense because when you think about it uh, the stations on the TYSSE aren't used a ton and so if we need to we can cut Young Line service to them and reroute that as Shepherd Line service and so Overall, yeah, I think it's a solid idea and so that's what I would do with the Shepherd line, to the west at least. This project, based on my calculations, would cost about 2.7 billion, though maybe 3 billion is more fair given the complexity of the work around Shepherd West Station. The next project I have to talk about is Shepherd the Other Side, or Shepherd East. So it's long been an issue that the Shepherd line is underused and I think a large problem with that is it's so short that, uh, you know, Taking a bus and then having to transfer to transfer again onto the Young subway is not that convenient and so extending it should be a high priority. That's especially true with indeed increased density along Shepherd as well as the numerous north-south transit connections and busy bus routes that you could connect to uh, as well as just connecting to Scarborough because yes it is legitimately frustrating to get to the center of Scarborough from North York right now and I don't think it needs to be that way. I would start with a tunnel east of Don Mill Station which would shortly uh, lead into an elevated guideway. Uh, we can do a nice attractive guideway in Toronto. Uh, I complained about Dubai in a video previously but one thing I really like about the Dubai Metro is the unique guideway design and I think we could do something just like that in Toronto uh, to make elevated subway trains not actually uh, ugly and not imposing on the landscape. Fortunately though Shepherd has wide setbacks for most of its length, it's a wide street and so I think that doing elevated there is quite appropriate. I've lived uh, on Shepherd Avenue before so I feel pretty confident in being able to say that. Uh, what I would do is go underground around Kennedy. The reason I would do that is so that we could have a very nice connection with Asian Court Station. Uh, the Sova line is getting very frequent service and so a high quality connection is critical and past plans have seemed to sort of ignore that connection and so not good. Obviously we have a lot of issues with a lot of transit plans in Toronto and connectivity between lines is one of those issues uh, and so I would put it underground to improve the connection uh, between Agent Court Station and the Shepherd Line. I would then drive sort of roughly southeast in a tunnel again uh, and come out just around Scarborough Centre. There's a lot of open land and parking lots in the area and so I'd have a portal come above ground in Scarborough Centre and then actually come elevated into an area roughly adjacent to where Scarborough Centre Station is right now uh, but just coming from the north. So you'd essentially have the Shepherd Line platforms uh, parallel to where the existing Scarborough Rapid Transit platforms are. Uh, I think that location is actually better than the Scarborough Centre Station location planned on the current Line 2 extension and so we're going to talk about that a bit more. My estimated cost for this project, given how much of it is now above ground, would be three and a half billion dollars. 
Now, the next thing I have to address is the Scarborough subway extension. And I am going to make some suggestions that I think not only reduce the cost of the existing extension, but allow it to go further and connect way more communities. What I would do is, given the fact that we seem to accept that at some point people will have to get on buses and that the SRT is not going to keep operating until uh, a subway extension that replaces it opens, I think what we need to do is that now knowing that uh, shutting down the SRT isn't really a barrier, we should just replace it with an elevated slash above ground extension of line two. What I would do with that is realign the Kennedy station on line two. Perhaps you could keep the original platforms and that would allow you to short turn some trains there, which might make sense given the fact that it is a substantial transit hub. So with those realigned platforms, what I would do is have the line continue north, go above ground and follow along the original SRT alignment. Now, there is some industrial space on both sides of the rail corridor, and this would limit our ability to add a new Stovall line station, but I think that's just the cost of doing this plan. Uh, and frankly, if you wanted to add another station, well, you could probably take some of those industrial buildings and widen the corridor uh, around Lawrence and use that to construct a station for either line two or the Stovall line there. You have options. Uh, when line two uh, gets north, it would cross under the Stovall line or cross over it, depending on what we decided was a better approach. Again, very much following the same approach that the Scarborough RT followed. We could have a station at Midland or replace it. Again, all of the stations would kind of be in flux. We could decide which ones to keep, which to add. Though note that above ground stations can be done pretty affordably, so having more is definitely possible. Uh, and then what I would do is have line two come right into Scarborough Center, just to the south of the Shepherd Lines platforms. Uh, so what you would have is you would have literally Shepherd Line to the north, Scarborough uh, subway extension to the south, uh, and you might be seeing where I'm going with this in a bit. What I would actually do is continue Line 2 further east. It would travel again along the SRT corridor before turning north and continuing beyond it. So there have long been plans to extend the either the SRT or some transit line into Malvern, and I would do this with Line 2. I would stay above ground following the SRT alignment uh, until we get uh, sort of just south of Highway 401. I would go elevated, cross Highway 401, and then after I had passed the sort of parking lots on the north side, I would go back to the surface and operate the line as an at-grade line with obviously grade separations at the major streets uh, until we got just to the west of Malvern Town Center. Uh, and then I would go underground and serve the area with an underground station. Now, while I am suggesting an underground station here, it is totally possible that we do an elevated section into Malvern Town Center, but it would be a little more difficult. And since I did have the budget, I decided, hey, we can go underground here since a lot of this line is already above ground or elevated. But remember, these things are in flux. Thanks to the fact that this line would largely be reusing an existing right of way, uh, as well as the fact that the new stuff would mainly be on the surface with a few elevated sections, the total cost would only be around $2.5 billion in my estimation. Better yet though, much like we did on the Spadina line, I would suggest we through run some Shepherd line trains onto this new extension. It would be doable because we'd have both the Shepherd line platforms and the uh, Scarborough subway line two platforms uh, right adjacent to each other at Scarborough center station. So with a little track work to the east, uh, we could have Shepherd line trains continue. I think that would work fine because as I mentioned, we might already short turn some trains at Kennedy or as well at Scarborough Center Station. And so there would be slots to run Shepherd Line trains all the way into Malvern. What's cool about this is you sort of have this uh, Northern Crosstown route uh, that would be fast and high quality that somewhat parallels the 401 through much of Eastern Toronto that I think would be quite valuable, but it also just gives you more connectivity options. And what would be awesome about that through running of the Shepherd Line is now students at York University who live in Scarborough would have a substantially faster way of getting to York University by riding one of the various suburban buses to either Scarborough Center or some other location on the Shepherd Line and then taking it all the way up to York University. And I think that would actually be really cool, a great way to introduce some form of interlining on the Toronto subway network, this time I think better thought out, uh, while really improving connectivity and reducing the need for transfers, uh, sort of taking advantage of the sort of excessive infrastructure we've built on the TYSSE. Now the last projects I'm going to mention involve the Finch West LRT. I don't like a lot of the light rail we've built in Southern Ontario in recent years, but again, I like light rail more than I like buses if cost wasn't an issue. And so we built the Finch LRT, let's at least extend it and improve its connectivity. Now on the Western end, I would do what I'd mentioned in a recent video about Toronto's Transit Explained, and I would extend it south and southwest over to Woodbine GO Station. 
This would provide a good connectivity for people living along Finch Avenue and using the Finch West LRT to get to Pearson Airport as well as get onto the GO network. And it would allow people from, for example, Peel Region to access locations along Finch Avenue. Uh, for the relatively low cost that it would probably require to get there, I think about 400 million was my estimate. Uh, I think this is sort of an obvious project to build and uh, it would really improve the usefulness of the Finch West LRT, which doesn't have any connections uh, to the higher order transit network planned for it, besides that it's terminus at Finch West Station. Now I'm going to propose one final extension to the Finch West LRT that is a bit out there, but I think it actually provides some good value. What that extension would be is an eastern slash southeastern extension. Now the reason I don't want to go straight east is because I think the Shepherd subway line sort of makes going straight east redundant. Uh, we already have an east-west connection, so the Shepherd subway line can be used for those trips. What I would do is extend the Finch West LRT south to Downsview Park. I would do this by digging a short tunnel, uh, sort of uh, east-southeast to line up with the Barrie Rail Corridor, and then I would run uh, trains alongside Berry Line trains, of course with a gap because these are light rail trains, uh, before terminating at some surface platforms at Downsview Park Station. Not only would this be a valuable reuse of that north-south rail corridor, but it would mean that people using the Finch West LRT would now also be able to connect to the Berry Line. The reason this is valuable is for people on the Finch West LRT, getting downtown is going to take quite a long time. So if you have to already consider your long Finch West LRT trip, uh, it's going to be still sort of painful to get downtown because, you know, long Finch trip, uh, long subway trip. Allowing that connection to the Barry line not only would maybe take some uh, congestion off of the Spadina line, which would probably be good in the long term, but it would also make good use of the improved regional rail service on the Barry line and would mean that people could get downtown much faster than taking the subway, which I think would be a valuable option for people to have. This extension would cost on the order of 750 million to a billion dollars uh, because it's largely adjacent to an existing rail corridor. It would probably require shifting the tracks uh, and maybe expropriating some land, but overall I don't think it would be that expensive of a project. And it would make the connectivity of the Finch West LRT quite good because it would be connected to go on both sides now uh, and it would also have that subway connection to line one. Now, if we were to build all of these lines, uh, the low end of my projected cost estimate is around $27.5 billion, not far off of the current government plans. Where do I save all that money? I significantly reduce the amount of tunneling we're doing, which does truly cut the project costs massively. Uh, elevated, typically from the projects I've looked at, costs less than half as much as tunneled. Uh, and so if you can go elevated much more broadly, that's very useful. I also take advantage of sort of surface alignments where possible to further reduce the cost because operating on the surface does cost less than operating elevated uh, when you're talking about extending existing lines. The reason I mention extending existing lines is because it also factors into your capacity equation. Uh, if you're building a fully grade separate line instead of a surface light rail line, obviously that changes things because you could use smaller trains to compensate for higher frequency. Nonetheless, the transit projects I would build essentially far better connect the inner suburbs while also connecting Mississauga city center and the airport to the rapid transit network in Toronto proper. Along with the Ontario line, you'd have way improved subway coverage across the city. And layering on top of that, the improved GO network, I think you would truly have a world-class transit network for Toronto and not at that much more cost than the current plans, which I think spend way too much on only a few corridors uh, instead of being smart and uh, value oriented and getting a lot more coverage while still maintaining high quality transit coverage. I hope my plans don't sound too out there, but I decided, hey, let's indulge and let's talk about what we could do in the future if I had the ability to make these decisions myself. Anyways, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.